In this video we will be attempting to repair a CECHC PS3 model that has a yellow light of death problem. We'll start by disassembling the unit. Here we find out that the back of the console is molten, the screws holding the Wi-Fi board are stripped and it has no screws holding the motherboard. The molten back probably was because of the previous owner trying the heat gun method to heat up the internal capacitors so this console starts working for a limited period of time. It's a temporary repair that in this case destroyed the back of the console. And then the missing and stripped screws are probably from a previous attempt at repairing it and the previous owner that tried to repair this didn't care about assembling it uh, the right way again. This video will be a complete time lapse as it's a really long video so I'll interrupt only when it's necessary. Now I started checking for shorts on the capacitors which turned out to be useless as the internal resistance of the uh, graphics processing unit and the core processing unit, the GPU and CPU, both have a really low internal resistance. So this gave me nothing. I fer at first uh, I thought that uh, there was some kind of short on the capacitors or some other component, but it ended up being normal behavior of the console. Taking a look, a look at this part of the board, uh, I've seen uh, some leftovers of aluminum tape which probably means that someone tried to reflow it or reboil it. And there was also a solder ball between two of the capacitors, which obviously doesn't belong there. So someone attempted to reboil it or reflow it. And I then started cleaning uh, the components, the glue residue from the aluminum tape with isopropyl alcohol. Knowing that this unit was previously reflowed or rebuilt is really important at the end of the video. Here I am again looking for shorts. This obviously, as I said before, was useless. But I decided to check for faulty components on the front uh, and I thought again that the short meant that there was something wrong with the capacitors. So now we are trying to remove the old NEC capacitors. I'm using the knife method, which I do not recommend at all as 
you will see later that I destroyed the board uh, because of a knife slip which we will see in a few seconds. I managed to rip off three components from the motherboard apart from the NEC capacitor that I, that I was trying to remove and I could only solder one back into place and the other two were lost <laughs> on the floor and I couldn't find them anywhere so I couldn't put them back to, into their place. Then my girlfriend wanted to try and remove some capacitors and she did a far better job than what I did. Then came the time to remove the leftover of the uh, contacts from the NECs that were soldered to the board. They were really difficult to take apart. Uh, and I tried several methods. I tried removing them with some soldering wick so I can remove all the solder and then remove the contact, but that was useless. I then tried to add more solder so I can heat them up more evenly and then try to take them apart again, and I couldn't do that. So at the end, the only effective way to remove them was to leave them as they were and then with a really sharp knife and a thin knife try to place it on the edge uh, uh, between the contact and the solder and try to rip them off. Then taking a look at the console from the other side we noticed that the RSX was revolved and it was twisted clockwise. As we can see in this close-up, the RSX, RSX uh, isn't straight, so this is probably the main issue with this console. We will be attempting to replace the capacitors anyways, just to see if we get lucky. But I don't think that this is going to change anything. Here we are using 680 microfarad uh, capacitors which are rated for 6.3 volts which is more than enough for this console. Here we will try to power it on again and see if it stays turned on or if it just shuts, shuts, shuts off. And as we can see, adding those capacitors didn't change anything, so we will try adding more and see if that helps.
now we will try with more capacitors so we can see if this is a capacitor issue or not and as you can see the PlayStation 3 doesn't turn on so we are pretty sure that this problem is caused by the RSX being revolved or reflowed not properly and that's it this console is probably dead and really difficult to fix if it is fixable so this wasn't a successful repair so i'm pretty bummed because of this ending but i hope my next project is a success thank you for watching and see you in the next video